Well, we're certainly, you know, happy to get back into a regular work routine. Uh, bye weeks are great. We certainly had some good practice and had some opportunities to get some people rested and healthy, as well as to work on fundamental improvement with uh, a lot of our team. And I think that, you know, everybody out there probably thinks that there's some special formula or some special magic that, you know, when you play in games like this that uh, you go do different things to get ready for the game. And, um, but the most important thing is that you prepare for the game and that your players are focused on playing their best football, knowing that they're going to play against good football players and a good football team. Uh, but if there was, every game is important. So every game we prepare for uh, in a way that is most beneficial to our players being the best players that they can be, uh, most prepared that they can be. And when you look in games like this, most of the time things come down to how you execute, you know, what kind of fundamentals you play with, how many mental errors you make, uh, how you take care of the ball, how many turnovers do you, do you make. Um, and I don't think any player needs to feel like they need to do anything different or special. They just need to do their job with tremendous effort, tremendous toughness, and a lot of discipline to execute so that their particular unit has the best opportunity to be successful in what they're doing uh, with total respect you know, for the people that you're playing against because they're very good for a reason. Um, this is, you know, two good teams. Uh, this game for the last four years has, you know, had significance in, you know, our division, uh, our conference, and uh, in some cases on a national level. So, and I think everybody's aware of that, and that's not something that I think uh, you use in terms of how you prepare for a game like this between now and Thursday. Um, you know, we have a lot of respect, you know, for this team um, and playing against this team and as well as what they've been able to accomplish as a team. Les Miles has done a fabulous job there of not only recruiting a lot of very talented players, but doing a very good job of developing those players and um, being able to execute and having a lot of success in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. They're, they're very, very good. And uh, it doesn't take long to see why they, they are an undefeated team. And they played on the road against Oregon and Mississippi State and played well. But I think that um, you know the balance that they have on offense, their ability to run the ball, um, got a good offensive line, got really good runners, got good skilled players outside, have two good quarterbacks who uh, both play a little bit different style and get utilized a little bit differently, uh, but guys that are very capable, both guys, of beating you uh, in terms of what they do well. Um, they've been able to run the ball effectively and then make big plays down the field in the passing game because of the skill guys that they have. Uh, defensively, they're in the top five in just about every category. Uh, they play about eight different guys up front on defense and rotate a lot of guys in there. Um, very talented front guys, very deep uh, in terms of what they do. I got great team speed at linebacker and probably an exceptionally good secondary. So uh, they're a very, very good defensive team. Um, and they are, I think, first in our league in special teams in terms of uh, the job that they do and their kick coverage teams as well as their return game. So uh, this is a very, very good team, you know, all the way around. And uh, certainly we want to prepare and play our best football uh, in games like this. And uh, it's an opportunity that our players have created for themselves by what they've done. And they should look at this game as an opportunity for them to accomplish some of the goals and aspirations that they set for themselves early in the season. Coach, you, you kind of touched on their defense, but maybe could you talk about, uh, elaborate a little bit on what they do so what stands out to you? And maybe for us laymen, kind of how different the styles are, the approaches are to you all. Well, I don't know that they're, they're that much different, you know, than we are. I mean, they play a 4-3 when they're in a base defense, and we play a 3-4, but they're going to stop the run. Um, they do a good job of pressuring, playing eight-man fronts. We'll play double sink. Um, they'll cover you man-to-man -man if they need to. Um, they do a good job of playing nickel and dime. Um, some of their dime stuff is of odd in nature, just like some of what we do is. Um, and they've got good players that play in these specialty positions that do a really good job of 
of executing for him. Um, you know, number seven really does a good job as a star when he becomes the the nickel back. Um, and then they play six DBs a lot on third down. So there are sim some similarities um, in terms of how they match up personnel. Uh, and I think philosophically in how they try to play the game, even though it may be a different system of defense, um, they're going to try to stop you running, pressure and affect the quarterback, um, do a good job on third down. and. And that's why they've been successful, because they are able to do those things fairly well. You mentioned number seven uh, in the star, Nickel, playing well. But he also has an ability to turn over the ball, create turnovers. Why is he even able to be so effective in that area? Well, I, I think as a team, you know, this is one of the things that you have to say is a phenomenal statistic for them. You know, their, their turnover ratio is off the charts in terms of their defense, their ball hawking style of play. Uh, they have lots of guys on defense who can make plays. Seven is one. Seventeen is also one. Uh, they have some guys up front, but they have only had one turnover on offense, you know, the whole year uh, and have a, one of the best turnover ratios in the country uh, because of their ability to create turnovers with their defensive style. Uh, they do a good job of rushing you up front, and you got to do a good job of blocking them, too, when you throw it. So um, they're, they're good all the way around, and they have a lot of playmakers on their defense, and that's why they have lots of turnovers. Coach, when you look at LSU's play on the line of scrimmage on, on both sides of the ball, are there a couple individuals that stand out to you as a, an especially big challenge? Well, I, I don't know that um, – I, I think the thing about this team is how they play as a team. You know, they have a good offensive line. Their offensive line does a good job working, you know, together in unison. Uh, their defensive front is physical, strong, and fast on the edges. Uh, and they have really good speed at linebacker. Uh, they play eight different guys up front. I don't, I, I, it's hard telling when they're playing that they're all good players, that one guy is a dominant player and somebody else it doesn't do as well when they come in. So, um, you know, their offensive line is big. Um, their runners are physical. They can run it downhill and get it on the perimeter on you. And, you know, they've got seven or eight different guys that play pretty, pretty well for them up front on defense. And they rotate all those guys, and they all do a good job for them. Uh, Coach, happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. It's um, hard to think about. Birthdays. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the players had a little birthday party, and they all signed this jersey number 60 with my <laughs> name on the back. I, I held that thing up, and I said, Saban and 60. That, that, first of all, I wasn't thinking about age. I was thinking about I'm a skill player. There's no way I can sport this 60, man. I, I got to have a lower than 50 number of some sort. So that's how I feel, and that's how I think. Coach, I know you said you don't want your players uh, getting all caught up in the hype, but how much appreciation do you have for the historical significance of this game, and how, for, how fortunate do you feel to be able to coach in a game like this? Well, I, and I, I think, you, you know, what I feel is, what's been accomplished to this point by both teams, you know, to have the opportunity to make the game what it is. Uh, and, you know, the consistency of performance on both sides, especially, you know, what our team has been able to do in terms of, you know, their performance throughout the year to create an opportunity like this for themselves. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's fun to play in, in games like this. Uh, it's probably what great competitors look forward to. Uh, but I also think it's important to be able to stay focused on what you need to do to play well. Um, and you can't, you know, drain yourself emotionally because of all the things that are happening surrounding the game. You've got to be ready to play the game when the game comes. And to do that, you've got to do a good job in preparation in terms of how you rest, how you practice, how you focus, how you study. Uh, all those things, you know, remain of utmost importance. Um, in any game that you play, but especially in, you know, games like this when you're playing against very good teams. Coach, you mentioned playmakers, and there are going to be a lot on, on both sides of the ball in this game. 
Are there traits other than athleticism that go into making a playmaker? Oh, I don't think any any question about it. I'm, I I think that you know guys that make plays make plays because they're very instinctive and they react quick quickly to what happens you know on the field. Um, you know I always use the baseball analogy that. You know, you can teach a guy to swing a bat, and he can have a great swing, and you can teach him what the strike zone is and all that, but you can't decide for him whether it's a good good or a bad pitch to hit when it leaves the pitcher's hand. So um, that comes from some kind of athletic intuition, instinct, whatever it is, and uh, that ability to see and react quickly uh, is something that's going to always put you in a position to be a playmaker and to make plays. Uh, no different than a guy that's a really good hitter. Uh, every every hitter has a bat, and every hitter has the same opportunity and probably has the same training, but some guys do it a, a lot better than others because they can make the decisions of what pitches are good to hit and when to hit them. I know you've seen these two quarterbacks before, uh, but they're kind of flopped in uh, roles this year. How does that dynamic change uh, for your defense? Not really. I, I don't think it changes much at all. I think their style of play on offense is a little different. Uh, and I'm not sure it's it's because of the quarterback uh, as much as it is because of the kind of team they have uh, and, you know, how they choose to play, you know, as an offensive team. Um, and they're going to run the ball downhill on you. and. Uh, when you put them all up there, they're going to try to throw it over your head and make big plays. And uh, then they've got their specialty packages where they utilize and do a good job of utilizing, you know, a lot of specialty players. And, um, you know, when when nine comes in the game, you know, he's a guy that uh, can do some things as a running quarterback. Um, you know, when ten's in there, he's a they got a package of things that he's going to do, and 19's a very good receiving tight end. So they, they've got a lot of different types of players who can make plays, and they utilize their skill level. Uh, and you have to be very aware and conscious of where those guys are and what they're going to do and what they like to do when those guys are in the game. Big games are often decided by special teams. That What would you say are the strengths and weaknesses of your special teams? Well, I've already mentioned the fact that they're very good on special teams. Um, you know, I think it, at times we've had some inconsistencies in kickoff coverage, and I think that's something that we have to do a really good job of on in this game, this particular game. Uh, our kickoff coverage at times has been very, very good, uh, but it just has been a little bit inconsistent in some games. Uh, our return game has been very good for us at times, and I think that that's something that can – really enhance field position. But, you know, as you know, you know, these guys have made lots of plays um, running fakes, punter running the ball, did it to us last year once, um, done it to some other folks, uh, did it to Florida uh, for a controversial non-touchdown. But, um, you know, they've faked the field goals before. so. I, I think that the, a critical thing in special teams in this particular game is not only to try to create opportunities in terms of what you do in special teams, but make sure you're sound and how you're playing so that you don't compromise your ability to um, defend anything that they might do in terms of fakes.